Good afternoon everyone, it's Caroline of Caroline's Corner. As promised, it's now the Christmas holidays for me from work, so I've come back with a new floss tube. This, I reckon, is floss tube number 27. It's Tuesday the 20th of December. Um, it's a bit of a grey day outside, I was hoping for us a bit brighter, but never mind. Um, and we've made it to the Christmas holidays. It was touch and go for a bit at work. It's been a tough half term. I think I say that every time. Um, but yeah, we we're all very, very glad to log off. Well, some pe most people logged off last Thursday. I had a bit of work to catch up on on Friday and Monday. So I logged off last night, thankfully. Um, so yes, so welcome to my channel if you're new. I have had a lot of new subscribers over the, over the, since my last video. Um, you're very, very welcome here. I hope you'll stay around. Um, to all returning viewers, thank you very much for coming back. Um, please like, subscribe, leave comments and do all that good stuff. Um, what else? Right, I can be found around the internet. I'm still on Twitter, although I don't tweet very much, as Caroline A. Kemp. I am also on Instagram under the same handle, and it's Caroline spelled with a K. I'm in Leeds in West Yorkshire. This is a channel mainly about cross -stitch, my crafty stuff, which is cross-stitch, knitting, some quilting and hand sewing. Um, Maybe occasionally books. We'll see if we can get back to books next year, but I'm not holding out any great hopes. We'll see. I think I don't record regularly. My life doesn't allow for that, really. I have a full time job during the term time and two very busy kids. So I tend to record find it works best for me to record when I'm on the college holidays. I work in an FE college. Um, I'm in Leeds in West Yorkshire in the UK. So I think that's all the practical stuff out of the way. Since I last recorded, I've actually had a shed load of finishes. Um, my new rotation that I described last time seems to be working in that um, I've cr cranked out a few things that were quite close to a finish. I suspect they'll slow down in a bit, but as I get on to stuff that has um, didn't have to quite as much done on it, because um, I have a lot of things that I've whipped, but most of them don't actually have that much stitching on them. Um, so yeah. So we'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll go into the finishes. So the first finish, the first thing I finished after I recorded last was the thing I was going to start working on, which was Clara Ellen by Blackbird Designs. This is one of the anniversaries of the heart pans, but it is the only one I'm stitching. My great grandmother was called Clara Ellen, so I wanted to stitch this design for her and here we are um, I used the call for threads which were mostly classic color works with one gentle art and it's stitched on a random piece of a sort of topish linen from my stash I'm not sure what it, it was unlabeled it's 28 count and I probably had for donkey's years since I used to be in a Fabric of the Month club with the old Silk Weaver, which should give you an idea of how long ago that was. Um, so yeah. So I made a couple of changes to the personalization. Instead of it saying, dear sister, oops, I put in my great grandmother's maiden name it's her date of death down this side and her date of birth in the planter. Very, very pleased with how this has come out. 
I will, I think, in the next year attempt to try and get it in to get it framed. That's what I think. I have her mother's sampler, my great great grandmother's sampler, on the wall, and it would be quite nice to have this one to ha sit next to it to uh, to commemorate my great grandmother. So that's Clara Ellen by Blackbird Designs. My next finish was actually a new start in November. Um, I attempt to have one new start a month. And since my kids were born, I have stitched them a Christmas ornament every year. The way it works these days, because they're older now, is I give them a copy of the Just Cross Stitch Ornament Edition and ask them to pick. Their pick out an ornament they'd like me to stitch. This year I gave them the 2014 magazine and my daughter picked out this ornament by, I think it's Hand Blessings, I didn't write it down, it's called Peace. Now in the magazine it's stitched on red perforated paper. Now I couldn't get any red perforated paper but I did have a piece of Victorian red Lugana in my stash so I used that and it is stitched with white DMC Perlay thread and as you can see I just finished it I actually stitched this one in the hoop for a change and just thought well do you know what I might as well just finish it in the hoop she was quite happy with that so that's what I did um, so it's just laced into the hoop, a bit of felt on the back, ribbon to hang it with. And that is the finished ornament. So piece ornament by Hand Blessings. And that was quite a quick one to stitch. I did that in a few days. It's a nice quick thing. And then my new start for December was the ornament for my son and he picked out Give Joy by Country Cottage Needleworks. This took a bit more stitching, hence it's not finished yet. That's another job for this week. So when I do finish it, I shall record a little video and I'll stick that in next to this, this splice it into the, uh, into the video. So yeah, so this is, uh, so it's Give Joy. It's stitched on a piece of 32 count water lilies from Witchlet that I had in my stash using the Call 4 DMCs for the chart. Uh, very pleased with how that turned out. That took a bit more stitching. It took me a couple of weeks to do. So very happy to get that finished. And then on to a couple of whips I actually got finished. So in October, I pulled out the only other whip I hadn't worked on this year so far, and that was Claire de Lune by Forget Me Nots in Stitches. And I got most of it done. The only bit I didn't get done was this bat on it. So when I picked it up this month, I just had the bat to finish. So that got finished pretty quickly and I'm really pleased with what it, how it looks. It's stitched on a piece of Lugana from Kiwi Illusions. It's called Coastal Sky. So it's just got a very, very subtle mottling. And the threads used are, it's the called for thread gatherer, silken colors in mint frost for the moon. And I think the chart called for um, um, a black overdyed cotton. I pulled out, I got some hand dye fibres from Nikki, Vicky Clayton that I'd had from something else and 
used her basic black for the bat. I think this will just become a flat ornament at some point, hopefully in the next year, and then I can get it out for autumn, sort of Halloween y autumn decor next year. So that was one whip down. So that's two so far off the whip pile. And then a couple of nights ago, I finished off a third, which again, I worked on in October and November to finish off. Claire de Lune, I started in 20, October 2021. So it's taken just over a year to do that little bit of stitching. This one was a mania start for 2019. It's Folk Art Needle Box by Hillside Samplings. And I bought the kit, complete kit, including the box, um, at about the time it came out, I think, or maybe a year later, I'm not sure, but fairly early on in the 2000s. So this is the Liberty Hill box that went with the kit. It was a limited edition. And this is my finished stitching. As you can see, the cover of the needle book is the design on the front of the front of the uh, box. Then there's two panels. One says pins and needles, and the other has some sheep and my initials on. And then there's one last panel where you put the uh, felt to hold your needles. I'm not sure what the linen is, it's what came in the kit and I think all the threads are DMC. So again another one where it is lovely to have it finished stitching finish. I now need to get on with the finishing on that one and get it finished into the needle book and I can get it out on display. It is uh, it having been in my stash for the best part of 20 years. It's really nice to have got it finished. Got it out, got it done, got it finished. And that's uh, one of my older, older whips. All done. So those are my finishes, that's five since I last recorded. Don't hold your breath for keeping up that hit rate, but I am hoping that the way I've got my rotation structured now means I should get through some pieces a bit quicker. Right. Before I go on to whips, I'm gonna have a mouthful of coffee. And a nice handmade mug. I got from one of my lo my local coffee shop mm. last Christmas. It's very reminiscent of the um, descriptions of the Farnham pottery that you get in the LCJ Oxenham books, of whom I am a big fan of the Abbey School books by LCJ Oxenham, mm. with the splashes of glaze all all around it. It reminded me very much of those without having to splash out and buy some Farnham pottery. Right, on to my whips. Now in my rotation, I'm working on two big pieces. Um, a modern piece and a reproduction sampler. So my modern piece that I'm currently working on is Skylar Wayne by Indigo Rose. Um, this is, of my regular whips, this is the oldest. It was started, it's another one that again was started for Mania to 2019. And has been worked on, on, on and off since then. A very, a very good and kind friend, um, I think she was called Carol. I had her in a secret stitching exchange through a bulletin board for those of us who's been around the internet a long time and remember the old bulletin boards um, kitted it up for me um, with 
all the Karen called for Karen threads, the water lilies and soy crystal. And what I think must be the called for linen, which was 34 count um, creme, oh, it's creme boule, cafe au lait, I think. And here's my progress to date. Since you last saw it, I have gotten all the trees across the top. I can't remember where I was on my last video, whether I'd worked on it or not. I think I had. Um, yeah, so I think I'd worked on it in October and I'd done those trees down the side. And I made a start on the alphabet. So I did the trees across the top and did another four, completed another four letters on the alphabet. Now I've structured my rotation for December, so I work, I'm working on my two biggest pieces primarily while I'm off on holiday. So from the 20th, I do five days on each piece. That's, that's the aim anyway. We're doing the kids' ornaments, that didn't quite work out this month. Um, so I'm going to, I should, from tomorrow I'll be picking this up this back up and the goal is to go down and do the four trees down the side and the remaining four ornaments to get myself, myself at least to the halfway point before I put it down before I get to the um, by the 25th when I on the on boxing day I'll swap to uh, Hannah Coates and if I can get a bit further because obviously with being off work I should get about twice as much stitching time in as I normally do. Leave that thread, shall we? Sorry about that. Let's lose those thread, loose threads. Um, hopefully, I'll get onto the bottom, bottom half. There's another quilt block to come in here, and then the alphabet continues down. Obviously, loom more trees. So. So yeah, so that's Skylar Wayne and I am very, very pleased with how well she, I'm doing on this one. Still got a few, a few months of uh, work ahead to get to, get to the finish point. Um, if, yeah, probably be middle of next year before I get it finished, but that's fine. Um, I'm just uh, glad to see one of my big, large projects getting somewhere. Also, in my rotation, I have a slot for a class project. And my oldest class project dates back to 2008. I don't know how well this will show up because it's white work. <laughs> um, and it is a white work sampler with motifs taken from the Goodhart sampler book. Um, this is one of the classes. Um, Eva Lotta Hansen of the Royal School of Needlework was taught it at. Um, Aqua at the Aqua Sampler Gathering in 2008, which I was lucky enough to go to. Um, so since October, what have I done? I have finished this bit along the bottom. I think I was part way through. There's some more cut work in there. I think I was on the cut work last time. So I've done the cut work on them and the dove's eyes. Not sure how well they'll show up. And I'm on the last bit which is a little cloth cross stitch, uh, oak leaf and old acorn, which I need to put either side. So, and then it will be done. And I think how I'm going to finish this one is just hem stitch around it, rather than try and do anything fancy. So I sh that should be finished next month realistically. The only reason it wasn't finished this month is because it took so much, it took a fair bit of time to finish the ornament. And obviously as that's a gift for my son that had to get done. That has. Um, so yeah, 
So unfortunately, white work sampler lost out a little bit on time, but doesn't matter. It's been waiting since 2008. It can wait another month to get finished. Right, I'm just gonna pause the video because I need to blow my nose. All right, as anyone who, if you've any, any of you have ever worked in education, you'll know, second you get to a holiday, keel over with a cold. And that's what happened to me. I'll actually, just before I finished, I started about Thursday with the, with the uh, Christmas holidays grot. So my other big whip, which is a re my reproduction sampler whip that I'm gonna focus on, is Hannah Coates, 1848 from Hands Across the Sea samplers. Um, I'm stitching Hannah in the Caulfield DMC. She's, she liked some really bright colours, did Hannah. Some quite vivid pinks and reds in there. My floss jewellery is a little key ring that my daughter stitched when she was in Switzerland visiting the worldwide headquarters for girl guiding our chalet in 2019. So she, she gifted me it, it's sort of wool on plastic canvas, she gifted me it, the Swiss flag and the girl guiding logo and uh, I decided I'd use it as some floss bling. So those are the threads. For Hannah and here is my progress. When you last saw Hannah, um, she's a very big girl, this is 40 count, um, 40 count light mocker from Zweigart. When you last saw Hannah I was so I've got the entire border done. Let's fold it up a bit. And I was working down the border on this side, putting the flowers in. So um, I got that finished and I have made a start at going along the bottom get to get that grass done because if I leave that to the end normally I don't start at the bottom I, I, I start at the top and work down on samplers but if I leave all that grass and that house to the bottom it's going to take forever so I got a little bit of the grass outlined and I started putting in the animals that go along the bottom because I figure if I get them in then, so I'm, I'm with that one, not quite finished. Um, I figure if I get them in, then I can start, I can just fill in when I'm not feeling, feeling like counting. That was my theory with the flowers as well, is if I have a night where I just want to mindlessly stitch. If all the flowers are outlined, I can just go ahead and do that. So this is the project I'll be picking up on Boxing Day when I'm hoping to, uh, I'll probably spend a bit of time putting some more flowers on the top border and then working my way along the grass and see, see how far I can get before the end of the year. Very much enjoying seeing some good progress starting to happen on this sampler, and it'll get six days and six days when I'm on, not working, so it should get a couple of hours every night, which is uh, me getting quite a bit of stitching time compared to less than an hour when I'm, days I'm working. So I have one last whip to show you, which is the whip I picked up when, as soon as I'd uh, finished working, up, finished folk art needlebook, which is uh, Elegant Pocket by Bearded Designs. 
This is another of my mania starts for 2019. Um, very pretty little pocket that was designed by Karen for Elegant Stitch. Um, it is stitched in needlepoint silk, silk in these lovely shades of purple and green. I've got it on this Kelmscott um, Mother of Pearl thread keep. And just stick the needle through. This is my project so far. Um, so when I picked it up, so I, it's had a couple of nights on it. I just had these two. I'd finished all this up here and put some of this border in. So I've, I've worked a bit more on the border and I've primarily stitched these birds on this side. So I've got both sections of flap done so I've just got two solid sides two big sides to stitch now so I'll be working on this tonight before I stitched switch to Skylar Wayne tomorrow um, stitched on elegant bean linen I can't remember the count I think it's 32 count no it might be 34 I have um, the accessories that go with this as a needle book and a scissor fob to go with it as well. And I've got the kit, the kit, I got the kit from Elegant Stitch along with the finishing kit, so I've got the material to finish it as well. Very much enjoy working on this one, enjoying the Dutch motifs. So that's one of the new so as far as my plans go, um, I've been musing on what I want to get done in 2023 and I definitely want to finish the last of my 2019 whips, which should be easily done because I only, only have two more that I've not picked up yet. Um, I have the From the Heart Basket, which will be going into my rotation from January because I have an empty slot. And then I have the Mary Gary thread, sampler thread that fold left. And I reckon I both, the basket will probably take a little bit longer because I think the basket band takes a bit of stitching. But I think, two or three months should see the ele elegant pocket stitched and then the thread fold will go into that slot and that should probably be done possibly by the summer if I'm maybe June if shooting for June if it stitching goes well and then those will be done after that we'll just see how far we get the big one that I have outstanding from 2019 is Skylar Wayne and if I can keep working on that every month I should definitely be done with that one by the summer and then I'll pick up the next of my big projects which is the TW Dragon which will take a bit by that point I should be well on with Hannah Coates so even though I'll be picking up a big piece that doesn't have a lot of stitching on I'm hoping they will be staggered so I've always got one big piece that I'm close to the halfway point if not past it so I can uh, I can be on the home stretch with but we'll see how that works out um obviously I should finish white work sampler next then I'll pick up little sewing fob that went with anniversary roses that I started this year get that finished and then my goal for the class projects because those are the really old whips that I've got all those all predate they're from to white work sampler is 2008 up to 2018 um I want uh the next the big one that I'll be picking out and hopefully finishing next year will be the 
Fruits of the Vine Sampler Hussif by With Thy Needle, With My Needle, Ellen Chester. Because I've got a good chunk of that stitching done, it's just the, um, the sampler bit to do and the pin pillow for inside. And again, when I work on that one, it should start seeing some serious project progress. I will start keep having a new one new start every month, but I'm not going to be doing the two new starts that I've had this year. Um, but yeah, my goal is to finish Skylar Wayne, hopefully finish Hannah Coates, but we'll see how that goes because she's, as I said, she's got a big, big sampler, and there is a lot of stitching in her but we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, have a new start every month, have some regular finishes. This year I've had 12 finishes now with Folk Art Needlework. Needlebook, that took me up to 12 finishes. So I've averaged out to finish every month, which is nice. I think that's the most I've had for quite some time since before the kids were born, I think. Um, so it'd be nice to keep that sort of momentum going, but we'll see how we go. Um, be nice to have some of the bigger picture pieces finished, but again, I'm not holding my breath on that one because that's just the way my life is at the minute. Um, so yeah, I think that's enough rambling about my plans for next year, is to try and stick with the rotation. It's working, I'm getting some regular finishes, so. And on to stash. And on to the piece which will probably be my New Year's start. And that is Fox and Rabbit, new stash. The Elizabeth Broadhead 1833 sampler. I mentioned this in my last video. This was a exclusive through the Facebook group, Homespun Spun Needlework. Julia Kasavi organises it. I ordered the kit. So... I have the fabric, 40 count fabric, uh, Fox and Rabbit fabric, and I've ordered mine with the cotton threads. Oops, losing them. Right, it's the white clay is the fabric. And again, Elizabeth's not it's a reasonable size sampler. So I shall start working on her on June, January the 1st. And then we'll see how far we go. But then she'll probably go on the whip pile until I, uh, until I get some of the other ones done. And the nice thing about this exclusive was it came with a few little free gifts. Fox and Rabbit's sliders were all with floss cards with the floss on the back of each floss card for the card. And it came through the, a stitching shop in Colorado and she supplied us all. She supplied a fob. This is either scissor fob or some bling for your floss ring. Very pretty. Oh, to match the sampler. Very much looking forward to get, getting on with that, though if I get anywhere other than some work on the border because that looks a very, very time-consuming border to stitch, I'll be surprised. Apart from that, there wasn't a lot else. Um, I bought this year's ornament edition. I know some people decry it, but I quite like looking through it. It's a way of finding new to me um, designers. Plus, um, as I say, I, I give them to my kids and get them to pick out. And they, they can have very different taste in ornaments to me. So it's useful for them. And as I couldn't let the magazine travel on its own, I bought the Seasons of the Heart designs from 
Brenda Gervais with Van Needle and Thread because they've been on my wish list since they came out at market and I'm looking forward to stitching those at some point. I like my seasonal pillows. Right, that's all my stitching stuff. So we shall move straight on to knitting. Um, as I explained last time, because of having issues with my hand, I'm not getting as much knitting time. But all right, so I'm concentrating on one project a month. So in October, I was concentrating on the, no, this November, the Miss May shawl. Sure. Um, because I recorded at the end of November, end of October, I did get a little bit more done on my blanket, but not enough to make it worth showing you any, it was just two or three more rows. Um, so this is the Miss May short mystery knit along by Curious Handmade. Obviously it's not a mystery anymore. I, I didn't start it until the mystery was fully revealed. And this is where I'm up to. I'm on my second chunk of the pink. Right, see if I can find my progress keeper. Last time I recorded a video, I was there. I was halfway through this variegated row. So I've finished the ver that chunk of variegated lace and I've got I think I have one more row to go on this pink, one or two more rows to go on this pink, and then I turn back to another short section of the variegated. So there's three more sections to go. There's another section of the variegated, and then another section of the light green, and then the dark green. Love working on this, but I, as you know, I love Helen Stewart shawls. Uh, the yarns I am using, the solid dark green is Sakami Yarns, Colourways Pendulum, it's their fine merino <coughs> sock yarn, excuse me. The lighter green is Norton, also by Sakami Yarns and also their fine merino sock yarn. The pink is some fondant fibres, which I'd had in my stash for several years. It's Merino Mulberry Silk, her Hannah base, and the colourway was Love Me Tender. And then the variegated yarn is from Meadow Yarns. Um, it's, it was one of a series of exclusive colourways they were doing in their Coombs Fingering base um called a hat full of sea they did some seasonal yarns based on pictures um, and this this color particular colorway is called new gale it's one that came out at the beginning of the year so when i was choosing the um, yarns for this shawl i knew i wanted to use the um variegated yarn that I'd got from Meadow Yarns. I really wanted to use the fondant fibres because I'd had that for a few few, few years. And then I found those two yarns in a shop in Ambleside in the Lake District and thought, well, they are going to pull the other two yarns together. And it's working really, really nicely. I'm very, very pleased with how that's turning out. And my knitting whip for this month is my socks, which I'm knitting in some opal yarn that I've had in my stash again for a good number of years. Um, it's one of the fresh and juicy was what it was called. And since I last recorded, I finished one sock off altogether. I was here. So I see my progress keeper on that sock. So that one's done. 
this is the yarn and I am well on the way up the leg of the second sock um, I'm just using a plain vanilla sock pattern of which there are any number around on the web if, you, if people want to google them um, it's top down I use 2.5 millimeter DPNs I've never gotten into circular needle sock knitting I much prefer using my DPNs but that's your mileage may vary it's all sock flap and gusset um, it's not a style of sock that requires a lot of thought from me because I, I I cast um, I cast this on about ten days into December. I'm on way. On, I'm over halfway down the leg already. So hopefully by the time we get to the end of the month, I should be well on with the heel. If if not, actually past the heel. But we'll see. So very pleased with my progress on that one. Knitting plans are just to keep going. In January, I'll pick up my habitation throw again, the blanket, do a bit more of that. And then February, I'll be back on with my uh, shawl. And now on to quilting. It's been a little bit of quilting, haven't got a lot done. Um, I'm hoping now I'm off for the uh, Christmas holidays. I can crack on and get a few more clue, get clues done on my mystery quilts. I got one more clue done on Sparkle and Shine, which is the mystery quilt from two, 2021. These are all juicy, juicy fabric. So it's part of clue seven. And that's the rest of clue seven. There's two pieces for that. So next up, be at very least getting clue seven done for Sparkle for So Sweet. Um, and then we'll see, maybe get clue eight, the clues eight done for both quilts. I'd like to think I'd get a bit further, but we'll see. Um, I have, of course, signed up for the new Mystery Quilt that Lisa's doing through, um, sorry, the Mystery Quilts come through the Modern Quilt Club. Lisa at the Modern Quilt Club, she's, she does the Mystery Quilts for Sheila in the UK. She has a lot of very, very nice colourways for the next Mystery Quilt that's coming out, which is called Village Green. I've chosen one that's got lots of sheep on it and is sort of sage and lavender and I'm actually going to do a large quilt again. It's last couple of years I've just done the small quilt so I think it's time to do another large one after um, Name of the Rose which I still need to get quilted and um, in use but I hope we'll see if we can sort that in the new year as well. I think that's going to be a goal for the new year. Um, so as far as quilting goals go for next year, obviously it's finish these two quilts and get them quilted and bound and into use and hopefully try and sort of stay so I can sort of get the next one done this next year as it sort of comes out. But I can hold my breath, but we know how well that works out, don't we? Um, so that's it as far as quilting stash goes. It's just I've 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 signed up for the next mystery quilt and we'll see. That will start from February, I think. January, February time. Otherwise, I have been working on my wool embroidery, um, my wool applique kit that I bought from Castlet Workshops when I was there in the when, summer. Um, as you can see I've got all the wool appliqued on. I started putting in some of the surface embroidery. 
I'm hoping I can get this finished uh, this month. This is the completed heart. So the goal is to get the, this finished because I think that will be a nice addition to my spring decor um, as soon as I get it, once I get it done. So I've not got that much fur to do. A little bit more chain stitch, got some buttons to sew on and then really we're into the assembly. So that's a nice one to pick up when I don't want to um, count or break out the sewing machine. So hopefully I will, I will, so I'm definitely hoping I can get that, that finished while I'm off work. So I think that's about it. Um, the downside to sticking to my rotation is I don't have nearly so many projects to show you, but you should, as I said, last time you should actually start seeing some serious progress on what I am the pro the projects I am working on so I don't expect I'll get to record again in January I suspect it will be February half term but that does seem to work for me um, recording once I hit the college holidays so I'll probably try and just stick to that so you'll probably get a video sort of every six to eight weeks I'm afraid. Um, so thank you very much for hanging in with me. I hope everyone has a fantastic holiday, whatever you celebrate. Um, we're sort of gearing up for Christmas and um, I think we're about ready, I hope. Um, I'm going to attempt to get this edited this week and get it uploaded before Christmas. So happy Christmas to everyone who celebrates. Happy holidays to those who don't. Um, and I will see you all in February, which will be a, is a scary concept. Um, I'm really hoping next year doesn't go as fast as this year, but what can we do? Right. Have a, have a great holiday season. Have a good new year and I will see you all then. Bye.